Hi, this is a quick Saturday afternoon update, July 25th, starting with Hurricane Hannah nearly making landfall now, showing on the satellite imagery a much stronger storm than yesterday. We don't have a cleared out eye or anything on the satellite, but it has become very impressive on radar presentation with a very well-defined eye and enclosed eye wall now evident on radar imagery. This is Mark Nissenbaum's FSU page here, and the storm is now crawling at a slow pace west or southwestward toward the South Texas coastline. This is Corpus Christi up here and Brownsville down here. This is fortunately moving into a relatively unpopulated county, but this is a large storm and this wind field expands over a wide area and we have had significant damage even reported down here where the southern eye wall has extended down toward Port Mansfield and uh, we've had very strong winds all along the coast. This is the current recon measurements of the storm. Let's update this quickly for the Northeastern Pass. And uh, we can see that in purple here, hurricane force winds at flight level, only slightly lower than this at the ocean surface, uh, approaching the Texas coastline, which is outlined here in white, in case that's hard to see. And again, very large region of strong winds. And some of these ground observations, like you can see here, this is a 55 knot or 65 mile per hour surface observation right on the Texas coast. And so these tropical storm and hurricane warnings are there for a reason. We also have very strong concerns about storm surge flooding as we reach high tide along and north of the eyes track later this afternoon and tonight. And uh, storm surge flooding of six to nine feet above normally dry ground is possible uh, even near and north of Corpus Christi. So just because Corpus is avoiding the eye wall here, thankfully, it doesn't mean surge is not a problem um, or flash flooding for that matter as the spiral bands continue to move on shore, dumping heavy rain. Again, the storm is moving rather slowly. It's very hesitant to come on shore at the moment. And all of this just means more and more water getting dumped over land. And this will be one of the main stories of Hannah is the amount of potential flash flooding that could occur, especially down in South Texas and Northeastern Mexico as the Rio Grande Valley is flood prone and that's where most of the rain will be falling over the next couple of days. You can see that rainfall forecast here with six to 10 inches shown on this map, but it could easily be isolated amounts of even over 20 inches in areas where the spiral bands train over the same location for many hours. That is hard to predict, but we know it often happens where you can see even double the amounts shown here in certain spots. So a big concern over the next few days, do be prepared and stay safe if you're in a flood prone area. And especially with the terrain in Mexico where mudslides could come down the mountainsides. So even if you're not in a low-lying area, uh, you could have trouble if water comes running down the terrain. The official forecast from the Hurricane Center just again showing that southwest track pretty self-explanatory at this point. Hurricane warnings in effect along the South Texas coast. And we could see even just a smidge more intensification here in the final moments before landfall. Right now winds at a maximum are about 85 or 90 miles per hour, maybe even 95 miles per hour based on recent recon data. And uh, those will be coming down periodically in gusts near the coast as the strongest parts of the eye wall move on shore. Uh, but this is now a couple hours from landfall. So stay safe, everyone in Texas. We also have land threats to Hawaii, where we're looking at Hurricane Douglas on approach now, uh, will impact the islands tomorrow, is on a track that will likely be a scraper, perhaps just north of the island chain, but can't rule out a direct impact of the core of Douglas. Right now, a minimal Cat 2 hurricane with sustained winds of 100 miles per hour will be about a Cat 1 with winds of 75 to 80 miles per hour by the time it makes its closest approach to the islands and will likely be slowly weakening as it comes through, but definitely no picnic, especially by Hawaiian standards. This is the uh, model spread right now showing the island chain in here. And again, some models do miss the island chain entirely, which is good news. But even so, the biggest problem in Hawaii is always the potential rainfall that can occur in the terrain um, on these islands the potential for flash floods and abnormally strong wind gusts in local uh, terrain induced tunneling or downslope flow that can cause stronger winds than you might expect even far from the storm core. So even if this misses with the eye, don't expect a lack of dangerous impact. So do be on alert. Right now it looks like it will stay a, a, a fair distance from the big island, but anywhere on Maui, Oahu, or Kauai could potentially see a direct hit from Douglas. And it's really just a matter of 
you know, a few dozen miles here or there, considering the storm's angle of approach, even just a tiny track difference can mean all the world for these islands. So keep a close eye on this over the next day or so and be prepared just in case. This is the Hurricane Center official forecast, which has this just scraping Oahu and Kauai uh, with the center here, but we do have tropical storm warnings for the eastern part of the island chain and a hurricane watch for basically everybody here except for Kauai at this point. Um, and again, slow weakening as this comes from east to west, but this is likely to be near hurricane intensity with winds at about 70, 75 miles per hour as it passes by. And again, rain and flooding uh, coming down the terrain, a possible concern here along with dangerous surf near the coastlines, especially in areas where uh, the terrain causes the wind to push water uh, wildly about as can happen in a complex island terrain such as this. All right, so that's Douglas in the Pacific. Everyone stay safe in Hawaii as this comes in. It's rare to have a hurricane approaching this way. Uh, so while Hannah is in Texas, this is quietly a, a big deal for this part of the world. So do take care. Uh, as we switch back to the Atlantic in other news, we have Gonzalo that crossed through the Windward Islands earlier this morning and is now officially dissipated in the eastern Caribbean as the circulation has opened up into an open wave. This is as we've kind of expected for the last couple of days ever since it failed to become a hurricane out here east of the islands. It is not strong enough to maintain a circulation in the face of these very strong Caribbean trade winds and so this has now dissipated and is not expected to reform as it brings disturbed weather to northern Venezuela and the southern Caribbean islands over the next couple of days days, but that is about it for that one. And finally, we have a new tropical wave to watch out in the eastern Atlantic. Very large one here. You can see some mid-level rotation with it already, and it will be coming westward over the next several days and is expected to become a tropical storm at some point in three to five days prior to nearing the Lesser Antilles. This is the European model depiction of that, showing the wave here on the 850 millibar chart. There's the Lesser Antilles. There's what was Gonzalo. And we can see uh, the gradual organization of this wave as it starts to amplify as it moves west. And we do have a bona fide storm moving through the Leeward Islands in about five days on the model. And most models do agree that it will be somewhere in this region by that time. But of course, the track and the formation time and the intensity all very dependent on exactly when and where the storm eventually consolidates because we are dealing with a rather broad wave envelope and as usual with forming systems you can't pin down a lot of detail until you know how that envelope uh, consolidates into a more compact circulation and that could change details of the track, the timing, and ultimately the intensity of the storm that results. So while we do expect a storm, details are sparse, but just be prepared in the Caribbean islands as it does look like it could be impacting that area of the world in about five days, uh, midweek or so, plus or minus a day, uh, depending on the timing. And then beyond that, we could see the Greater Antilles impacted, as we see on the Euro here. This particular run brings it up into Hispaniola. So in the long run, we'll be looking for potential land impacts from the storm if it does indeed form. Uh, conditions are pretty favorable ahead of it. We do have dry air to the north as always with these African waves, but it is not expected to be the kind of hindering issue that it was for Gonzalo. And in addition, this is a much larger system than Gonzalo and therefore more robust and not quite as fragile as Gonzalo was with its tiny size. So this is uh, perhaps a more solid bet to be a storm that is able to survive and perhaps cause problems farther west. So we'll be keeping an eye on this next as we head throughout next week. That's it for now. I'll leave you with the radar loop of Hannah. Everyone in Texas, Mexico, and Hawaii stay safe and be prepared. Listen to local authorities for your local area and the National Weather Service in your region. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.